Oh, four great games last night. Anderson Hunt wins on a three-pointer as UNLV knocked off Arizona. Sean Elliott's final game. Good switching man-to-man -man defense here by Louisville. Early in the game, Illinois did establish Marcus Liberty, the first-year player in that low post, got off and really helped Illinois get off to a quick start. Oh, he played. They're having trouble getting the ball down inside at all now. Played two and a half minutes now. Illinois has yet to score in this half. Kendall Gill, Keith Williams. Nice pump by Gill. Boy, oh, good mid-air move. They sent him to the left, and Williams was hanging right on his shooting hand, but what a move by Gill. Among other things this year, Kendall Gill added 20 pounds and has increased his strength. And it obviously didn't hurt his agility. He really gets up for the shot. 42-39, 17 minutes to go in the ball game. Kimbrough gets one to fall, and it's a big one to trade. That guy has been ice cold for the latter half of the season. It would really help Louisville's cause if he could get it going. Liberty tried to draw the foul. Louisville ball. They just smothering now all the inside attempts of Illinois. Illinois is going to have to really get that pressure defense going. Get aggressive. Go out and attack. Double team. This could be the first Louisville lead since early in the ball game. No. Nice effort for Bradford Smith for the Cardinals. A Louisville team that struggled late in the season. Unusual for Denny Crumb's bunch. Kenny Payne, that's the first shot he's missed tonight. And it was blocked. Anderson goes by Williams, gets the two. Well, that's what they do. They'll do it right off the rebound. Take it all away. At the other end, Keith Williams, Kimbrough, who just hit the big three-pointer. Irvin Small and Ellison battling down in the low post. Kenny Payne fights for position. Gets the ball. Small fronts Ellison. Underneath, Ellison. Foul by Irvin Small. You can see that one coming. Excellent read of the defense as they were fronting and backing Ellison. You see now they got a guy in front, a guy in back. The ball goes quickly out to the foul line. That un lets Ellison uncover. And not quite quick enough to rotate back and stop it. But what a read of the defense that time by the Louisville players. Ellison, who had only eight points in the first round game, came back with 21 in the win over Arkansas. Interesting, Tommy. He got a reputation as a sophomore as being non-communicative. He's really opened up to the press and I think to the fans in this his senior year. You know, something I noticed yesterday when I started going through different things, I, I found out something very important. You know why he never smiles? He's got braces. He doesn't want to show them. <laughs> 44 all on Ellis's two free throws. 15-45 to go. Nice feed to Irvin Small. Oh, boy. They pulled Ellison out to the top, past the foul line. The shot blocker is having to play a man outside. They're trying to get their game going to the hoop with Ellison not in a shot blocking position. 46 44, 15 25. Kenny Payne misses two in a row. Keith Williams tries to grab it from Liberty and fouls in the process. Here you're going to see getting position inside. Ellison trying to get. In there for the offensive rebound, putting somebody on his back. Rebound comes off the wrong side as Liberty pulled it down, but the guard, Williams, right there to harass. First foul on Williams. Anderson, Kimbrough gets it for Louisville. I'll tell you, Ellison right now is what a big factor defensively, if not blocking, intimidating. Travel. That's 16 Louisville turnovers. Everick Sullivan, number 34, will come back in the lineup. He replaces Keith Williams. And again, if you joined us late, Purvis Ellison, the senior center at 6'9", injured his right knee three minutes into the ball game. He had already hyperextended his left knee midseason and was out a couple of games. And Battle has not been in there for Illinois an awful lot, nor has Hamilton with a sprained ankle. He went out, and now with foul trouble. Kendall Gill blocked by Ellison time they didn't use Ellison on the outside to get it inside. Kimbrough. Illinois 
Wright comes out with it. Steve Bardo, four on two, Kendall Gill. If they come up with a steal, they get five guys at you so fast, your big people better get back. Well, oh, it's Layupsville. He went over to Bradford Smith at the other end. Tip is good, Purvis Ellison. Oh, boy, what a nifty move by Ellison that time. 48-46. Bardo comes, oh, what a pick. They got Urban Small. He looked like an offensive guard. And time has been called on the court. At UPS, we're changing the look of the international delivery business. Because now, UPS delivers to every country in Western Europe, the Pacific Rim, Down Under, and Canada. And because we're so efficient, we can deliver your international parcels and documents for fewer francs, yen, or drachmas than other companies charge. An accomplishment we feel deserves a little flag waving. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Change, twists, turns, the unexpected. To achieve financial security today, you have to know how to deal with change, or have the help of someone who does. Merrill Lynch, a tradition of trust. No matter what, it's a Geo. New Geo. Prism's got class with 16 valve kick. Geo. In a roomy four door. Geo. Or five door. Geo is protected from bumper to bumper. Geo. And has a very smart price. Give us a call. Sold and serviced by select Chevrolet dealers. Geo. No matter what. The road to the Final Four continues when Michigan battles Virginia. Then Seton Hall takes on UNLV. A regional finals doubleheader tomorrow on CBS Sports. Last night in the West, Jerry Tarkanian's team and P.J. Carlesimo's teams advanced to the round of eight. They meet Saturday. And tonight, Minnesota and Duke are having at it. And with 316 remaining, Duke leads Minnesota by 12. The winner of that game takes on either Georgetown or North Carolina State. And how about the win by Seton Hall last night? Boy, their guards were totally under control. They moved that ball against a very, very good defense that doesn't make many mistakes. I'd have to say that was a tribute to the two guards of Seton Hall that win. 48-46 here, Illinois Louisville. Illinois leads, 13-54 to go. Winner here takes on either Missouri or Syracuse. Kenny Payne. Felton Spencer back in the lineup. Can't get the rebound. He's playing with three fouls. Anderson a little out of control, but why that? Why not? <laughs> he told us yesterday, hate standing around. I want to go, man. Go. He was so funny. He was talking about the Georgetown Providence. Here's a hell ball. Possession arrow at Louisville. Nick Anderson was talking about watching the Georgetown Providence game in the first round, which Georgetown, of course, won by one point. They're not Providence, Georgetown, Princeton. And he said, man, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. 50 to 46. Nice feed. Kenny Payne from Ellison. Uh, good look once again by Ellison. Once he couldn't find the handle, knew where the open man was. By the way, that was four fouls just before the break on Urban Small, so he's on the bench. Marcus Liberty, Steve Pardo, who has the ball now at 35. Back to Liberty, the 6'8 sophomore. He's the tallest man on the Illinois team. Anderson for three. Rebound, LeBradford Smith. Nice pass. Everett Sullivan for two. We're tied again. Under control. Elected to pull it up so Anderson wouldn't have a chance to shot block it. 50, 50, 12, 45 to go. called on Everett Sullivan. The Bradford Smith comes up with the rebound. That's tough duty for a guard. Way up long, but two defenders back. And Sullivan says, hey, I've got that cute little eight-foot jump shot. I'm using it. Keith Williams back in the lineup now. 
And junior from Louisville Seneca High School. Williams had to sit out the first six games of the season with academic problems. Came back and has been a starter since. On the line, Illinois ball. Don't forget, coming up next, most of you will see NC State in Georgetown. Others in areas of natural interest will watch Missouri at the Big 8 against Syracuse of the Big East. That's next on CBS. 50-50, 12 30 to go in the game. I'm pretty impressed right now at uh, Spencer and Ellison watching themselves, particularly Spencer, who it's not easy to sidestep and not end up getting fouled. That time he got out of the way and let Payne pick up the foul. Now, Kenny Payne got the foul his first, and again, Spencer playing with three fouls. So he's gone with the Twin Tower set now. Here's Bardo at the line. Excellent free throw shooter. You know, he's one smart basketball player. He's the guy, you know, that famous play where Anderson hit the shot at the buzzer up in Bloomington to beat Indiana. But he's the guy that called the timeout after that Jay Edwards made that shot. Back it comes. Bardo takes it for three. Oh. Well, if he gets it going from the outside and Gill gets it going, they have shot fairly well from the outside this year but they're going to need it tonight they were only 18 percent from the outside in prior games in this tournament it's one of the interesting improvements for illinois last year they were dead last in the big ten in three-point shooting under 27 percent they have improved to 43 percent this year but louisville can hit from the outside as well all right you know they kept talking about no background in the domes to shoot the outside shot means nothing Everick Sullivan, the freshman with 11 points for the Cardinals. It's 54-53. Liberty. Anderson goes at Ellison. And goes over Ellison for two. They went through Ellison, not over. Ellison put both hands up, but the shot went between the hands. Back to a three-point lead, 11-20 to go in the game. Again, Illinois' Kenny Battle is in the lineup right now. But he played only six minutes in the first half, and he's got that right knee wrapped. He wears number 33. Here's another turnover. That's 17 Louisville turnovers. That was a bad pass. Ellison can't hold on to the rebound. Anderson gets it back. The piranha bit his arm off. <laughs> Kendall Gill. Liberty got position on Spencer for the rebound. <laughs> so Kenny Battle isn't here. Hey, I'm going to win the Kenny Battle Trophy, the second hustlest guy on the Illinois team. Fifty-eight, fifty-three, ten, twenty-eight to go. Spencer misses the shot, but will shoot a couple. Purvis Ellison, rather not Spencer. Oh, Purvis. Uh... Lipping around just a little bit, a lot less now than he had been right after the half, after he blocked a couple of shots. But not really his usual mobile self. LeBradford Smith comes on back in. Purvis Ellison, as a sophomore in high school, was only 6'2 at Savannah High School in Georgia, then sprouted up to 6'7 and is now 6'9". The interesting thing is his dad's 5'8", his mom's 5'10". We had to laugh yesterday as he misses the first. Kendall Gill of Illinois met him for the first time. What did he tell us? He said, I didn't think he was that big. <laughs> He's big. He's listed at 6'9", and the shot rims out. Bardo gets it. 58-53, nearing the midway point of the second half. The winner gets either Missouri or Syracuse. Smith comes from behind. Anderson, quick move. Knocked out of bounds, Illinois ball. You know, Nick Anderson reminds me a little bit of, um, what's it, from uh, uh, the Washington Bullets and the New York Knicks of old. Uh, quick, the name, I can't think. I lost it, I lost it. I did too. Yep, okay, forget about it. <laughs> Bernard King, that's a quick release of the ball. Quick release of the ball. Inside, before the big guy can get at it. Anderson, and the lead is seven. Oh, went over, felt Spencer that time. Nick Anderson has 20. 
At the other end, Everett Sullivan now has 13. The lead is 5. 9.43 to go. A battle's in the ball game, but he is noticeably off his game. Looks like Mike Krzyzewski's group will be into the round of eight. Kendall Gill, Marcus Liberty. Oh, what a read of a double team. Went over the top of Spencer to find the open man. Knew right where he was. The lead is back to seven. Denny Crum's team trails 9.29 to go. From now on, this is what dry is. Dry is a beer that starts bold from the first taste, finishes clean with no aftertaste, and refreshes completely. Dry is a beer called Michelob Dry. One taste, and you'll drink it dry. information systems. Alan, here's a record of a Northwestern Mutual policy your mother and I took out on you when you were born. Wow, the face value's almost tripled. Uh -huh. That's because for the last 50 years, they've ranked number one in dividend performance, more times than any other company. Well, I should let more people know that. Express mail from your post office offers you guaranteed morning delivery. We deliver, we deliver. Saturday's service at no extra charge. We deliver, we deliver. And an overnight price of just $8.75. We deliver, we deliver. Speed, convenience, price. It's a package only we can deliver. Express mail from your postal service. We deliver for you. Crowd estimated at 33,000 gathered at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in Minneapolis, Illinois, where the late surge now leads by seven, 62-55, 9:29 to go in the ball game. The winner gets Missouri or Syracuse on Sunday. Welcome those of you who watched Duke defeat Minnesota tonight in the East Regional Semifinal in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Our score right now, 62-55, Illinois. It was tied 50-50. Foul called underneath on Marcus Liberty. We were tied at 50 with 12.45 to go in the ballgame. Illinois has outscored Louisville by seven since then. Virginia and Michigan advanced to the regional finals in play last night. Illinois-Louisville meeting now, and Missouri-Syracuse here in the next game. Illinois or Louisville will face either Missouri or Syracuse here on Sunday afternoon. The Bradford Smith, perfect for the line tonight. And there's the Syracuse team, Matt Rowe. Uh, the uh, Orange men, they take on Missouri next. Now what's happened in this ball game is that uh, Illinois has reasserted itself. Their big guys are roaming around inside as uh, they have successfully pulled Ellison out of the paint. And Denny Crum has counted by putting the Twin Towers in there. Spencer and Ellison together, although Ellison has just has re coming back in the ballgame again. But they lost the, uh, the size advantage for about three minutes. Kendall Gill made a couple of great plays as did Nick Anderson going one-on-one. -on -one. Now they got Ellison playing uh, Anderson. Underneath, Kenny battles to Kendall Gill. Where's the foul going to be called? That was a schoolyard pushing it back. <laughs> Those are the ones where it used to end up hitting the pole underneath the basket. That's a 17 foul on Illinois. The foul is on Steve Bardo, his second. And that will send Louisville to the line with a bonus for the remainder of the game. Duke defeats Minnesota 87-70. And Purvis is going to shoot the foul. You know, during that slump and everybody was jumping all over the Louisville players, and one by, somebody asked Purvis if uh, he thought the other players were jealous of him. And he says, yeah, I think they're jealous of me. He said, 
Uh, Kenny Payne is, gen is jealous of my good looks. And uh, Fraley is jealous because I got my car. He wants it. <laughs> Ellison so far tonight, five rebounds, four blocks. He's got 11 points. Injured his right knee three minutes into the game and has favored it ever since. But playing what could be his final game in a Louisville uniform, he's giving it everything. Oh, Larry Smith, strong move. And I think a good no call by Dick Paparo wow. on Spencer did the best he could try and pick up the charge call, backed off, didn't go for the block whatsoever. And Louisville had their hands on it at the trap part of the defense. LeBradford Smith got one. That's for three. Boy, that outside shot as compared to the last time we saw him play is under control. Smith. Very smooth. Smith has 14 points. He's tied with Kenny Payne. The attempted answer at the other end, Kimbrough with a rebound. Two-point edge. The trap doesn't work. Here's LeBradford Smith. Drives for three more, short. And Bardo behind the back pass, three on one with Sullivan back. And a bad pass. Rejected by Louisville. Twin Towers, actually Kimbrough is the guy that blocked that one. You don't get those many opportunities, three on one, Tommy. Sullivan short. 64-62, 7.40 to go. Nick Anderson, the junior out of Chicago, hurries down. Back it comes to Bardo. Rejected by Kimbrough, who got hit in the head. Kimbrough's injured at the other end. Now he comes up as Sullivan controls it, and time has been called as Tony Kimbrough took an elbow in the forehead. I think it was a hand, actually. Uh, Tony Kimbrough. Really makes a great defensive play here. Gets right in there and leans over, makes the block, and then gets hit with the backlash of the, the hand right in the eye. Duke wins tonight over Minnesota. They'll take on either Georgetown or NC State. That's going to be Sunday afternoon at East Rutherford, New Jersey. Georgetown and NC State getting ready to play. That's next, and most of you will see that one. Others will watch Missouri and Syracuse. Spencer can't get the rebound. He's playing with those three fouls and trying to protect himself. Illinois leads 64-62. Gill trapped in the corner. LeBradford Smith. With Spencer and Ellison in there, they are able to put a shot blocker and protect the basket on either side of the court. So any, try to, any side that they try to penetrate, they can cut you off. And Kimbrough, who had just left the game because of that slap in the eye, was also doing an effective job of shot blocking. Smith, Payne, Spencer, Ellison, and Keith Williams on the floor for Louisville. There's Kendall Gill. Oh, did he get the touch? Well, I tell you, he is some kind of player. Great moves and under control. Gill with 14 points. Four point Illinois lead. These two teams have only met once before in their respective histories, 1979. Ironically enough, Illinois knocked off Louisville late in that, in the year of 79, early in the 79-80 season. And Louisville, of course, went on to win the national championship with Daryl Griffith leading the way. That was 10 years ago. Great quick hands, Bardo and Liberty. And Larry Smith with a chance for three. Now Smith is the fastest of the guards with a hard push, and he's like water. He will go as far as you go, let him go until you dam him up. Here he gets by his own man, Spencer trying to pick him up, but much too late. And that's the fourth on Spencer. Danny Crum looks over at his bench and asks Kimbrough if he's ready to come back in. Instead, he'll send Everick Sullivan in. So the Twin Tower idea, which, which gave Louisville at one point an 11-0 run in the first half, works effectively here, but Spencer goes to the bench with his fourth foul. And it certainly was intimidating uh, while he was in there with those three fouls. I thought he worked the three fouls nicely. That time, the Louisville guard just didn't do his job. Smith short. Steve Bardo goes to the line. Thought he was going to get a chance for the conventional three. 
68 62 614 remaining Benny Crum sitting over there just not a happy camper had an interesting thought for us about the, the midseason slump they had Tommy he said for the first time his team got tired in the middle of the season well he prepared his team differently this year usually he starts out with fundamentals but was forced to go to the team concept in the practices early because they were playing some tournaments and he thinks that that's what really caused the problem of their being mentally and physically tired after that injury of Ellison and he gave his players a couple of days off shortened up the practices and they got it back in sync just before the Metro uh, tournament Bardo gets one of two 69 62 largest lead this half has been equal now at seven points Williams hollering out instructions to his teammates Louisville team it's 24 and 8 Keith Williams, not a good outside shooter, and that one won't go. Kenny Battle fights for the rebound, knocks it right to Kendall Gill. Back to Ken Battle. Underneath, dishes to Larry Smith. There's a chance for three. Keith Williams with a foul. Well, two of the Louisville big guys never did really get back in time to stop it, and Williams had to make a move as the Illinois players got great position right in the paint and finally Ellison does show up but much too late Tony Kimbrough comes back in Keith Williams picks up his second foul and Larry Smith the junior from Alton Illinois is at the line every player on this Illinois roster is Illinois born and raised or at least raised Seven regular season wins is the most in the school's history. Well, they've had a rep of losing early in the NCAAs, and indeed they have the last couple of years. That's going to be Ellison, offensive foul. Got him throwing the right elbow. 71 62, 525 to go. But this Illinois team did advance to the regional final under Lou Henson in 1984 and had the misfortune of having to play Kentucky. Lexington and they wound up losing by three on what some might say was a disputed call late in the game. Well, Lou Hinson, uh, I'm surprised he didn't have an orange jacket on tonight. Nice. Last year in the tournament he had the orange jacket on. That may be why he doesn't have it on tonight. <laughs> 71 62 520 to go from OK Oklahoma originally. Honest. That's his hometown. OK Oklahoma Lou Henson. <laughs> Everick Sullivan, Kenny Payne can't, help, can't hang on. Marcus Liberty gets it. Five minutes to go. Field goal percentage, 48 for Illinois. Louisville, 43. Larry Smith tracks it down. Yeah, Louisville's kind of forgotten about Kenny Payne and their offense. Smith. Oh, nice quick move. And another block by Ellison. That is the 12th block by Louisville. At the other end, Kenny Payne stripped of the ball off Payne. Illinois ball. Uh, he was a little frustrated because he hadn't touched the ball. That's why he went to take the shot. 4.33 remaining. Illinois leads by nine. now has an affordable new hatchback so you can get more into it and more out of it.
happens every seven seconds. Every seven seconds of every hour of every business day, America puts another new Epson computer or printer to work. It's true. When you've got an Epson, you've got a lot of company. Capacity for basketball at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, 33,000 on hand. This, by the way, is the site of the 1992 Final Four for the NCAA tournament. 4.33 to go, Vern Lundquist, Tom Heinsohn. This is a brand new configuration for basketball. They played basketball in here twice previously. We are actually located along the third baseline, the old configuration over along the first baseline. Lou Henson looks on, trying to get his team into the round of eight for the first time in a few years. Louisville has cooled off considerably in the second half, Tom. Uh, Kenny Payne, uh, I think he's one of their options they ought to start looking to. He's one of six. I got to get him feeling good about himself. That's why he took that shot and had to bounce off his chest out of bounds. He had a four-on-one fast break. LeBradford Smith, number 23, 71-62, Illinois. We were tied at 50-50. The Illini had a three-point lead at the half, 50-47. The largest lead of the game was early in the first half of 30 to 18. Shot goes Everett Sullivan. On a rotation of uh, Illinois' defense, they forgot about him, and he just sneaked in along the baseline. No shot blockers there for Illinois, like Louisville has. Larry Smith, number 23. No team on this Illini squad taller than 6'8". That's Marcus Liberty, who has the ball right now. They're playing without a center. They're keeping the middle wide open so that they can make some cuts or high picks and then drive strong to the hoop. And they're putting the pressure. There's Purvis Ellison ending up on the guard. Got him way out, so he wasn't protecting the basket. Lead is back to nine. Very smart play by Illinois that time. Kenny Payne hits only his second shot of this half. He's now two for seven. The lead is back to seven, 3.15 to go. Get him coming off some picks. He's got the stroke. Steve Bardo. Back it comes to Kendall Gill. It's Gill, Bardo, Liberty, Smith. And Anderson on the floor right now. Hamilton in battle, get rest. There's the 13th block. That is a new NCAA tournament record in a single game. LeBradford Smith short with the three. And Bardo fought Ellison off for the rebound. Why, oh, somebody just yanked him, man. No call. 2.35 remaining in the ball game. Uh, Dave doing a great job keeping Ellison away from the basket. Now, using his man to set picks on the outside, so he's got to come out with them. And that middle is wide open for somebody to go to the hoop. This is an Illinois team that won its first 17 of the year, got ranked number one for the first time in the school history, and then lost after they lost Kendall Gill, lost their next game at Minnesota. Underneath again, Marcus Liberty. Oh. The tip is good, Dick Anderson. What a great play by Liberty, though. A little fake on Ellison. That's what you do to shot blockers. He missed it. But Nick the Quick was there. Timeout, Louisville. After six hours of school, I had a look of the day. I hit the radio dial. With the designed in sound of a Delco Electronics music system. Now the best seat in the house is in your GM car truck. Delco Electronics, it's who we are. You see no Chevy versus Ford test, right? We came up with one of our own. Half-ton 4x4s, best available tires, driven at the same identical speed right through this 18-inch deep ditch. Now, this is a real control test, so don't you try it, because you'll damage your truck. That's the Chevy with torsion bar suspension, and that's the Ford with twin traction beam suspension. And you can see why we've had a change of heart and pickups. That's today's Chevy truck. Your man in Washington has come through. The Americans will be most displeased. Observe. The Argon activated radio optic laser light. Amusing, Boris, but the party demanded Bud Light. If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Where is Boris? He is in 
enjoying a cold one. <laughs> but light, because everything else is just a light. The Honda Lawnmower. It was first with a convenient blade brake clutch, with an automotive type shaft drive, with an easy starting overhead valve engine. It's the first mower good enough to be a Honda. The Fighting Illini trying to take one more step toward the Final Four in Seattle. They lead 75-66 under two minutes to go. The last time Illinois had a Final Four team, 37 years ago. The coach is Harry Combs. You recognize the second guy on the left-hand side? It's Johnny Red Kerr, second on the left, and uh, came in, played with the Syracuse Nets in the NBA. And Bill Russell uh, turned him into a passer. He used to be a scorer. <laughs> Bill Russell turned him into a passer. Payne, no. Everett Sullivan with a rebound. Air ball. Oh, what a rebound. Outlet pass. Listen to the roar. to Villanova in the second round. In 87, they lost to Austin P in the first round. In 86, they lost to Alabama in the second round. They're trying to erase that recent history. Foul, LeBradford Smith. Coming up tomorrow, the World Figure Skating Championships continue from Paris, France. You'll see a men's recap with the USA's Christopher Bowman and Canada's Chris Browning. Plus the pairs competition. That's tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern on CBS Sports Saturday. Kind of a wonderful way to lead into our CBS NCAA basketball coverage from Paris, France tomorrow. You know, you really have to admire this Illinois team to lose their leader, so to speak, Kenny Battle, who really wasn't a significant contributor here other than the fact that uh, he is gutsy enough to try and go out there and play. He was in game. He was really not mobile. But I think everybody on Illinois is going to get a shot at winning that second place trophy hustle award. The Kenny Battle Trophy. It was 1984, the last time the Illini were in the regional finals. That's when they lost to Kentucky in Lexington. There's Lou Hansen. There is Felton Spencer. He has a year left at Louisville, but for Purvis Ellison, the final 65 seconds of a glorious four-year collegiate career. Ellison, who was the MVP as the Cardinals defeated Duke in Dallas in 1986, he is a minute and five seconds away from winding up his Louisville career. And the free throws not falling for Illinois. Here comes the Bradford Smith to say that Illinois got some spectacular play off the bench tonight. Marcus Liberty played well. Smith played very well. As two big guys were not able really to contribute for Illinois, Battle and Hamilton. Don't forget next, NC State against Georgetown from East Rutherford. Most of you will see that game. We'll be back here in the Metrodome in 30 minutes or so with Missouri against Syracuse. There's Jerry Jones, 16 years, Denny Crum's assistant. And Lou Henson getting ready to celebrate for about an hour, and then he's got to go to work. He's a great checker player, but the next round he's going to have to play chess. That's right. Illinois will go up against either Missouri or Syracuse. The Bradford Smith, final 40 seconds to go. Shot short. Kendall Gill, spark plug of the victory. Alley-oop. Marcus Liberty. Bardo, dish it to Anderson. Final four seconds. The Illini have done it by 
14. on either Missouri or Syracuse here on Sunday afternoon. Stop Derek Coleman from making his point. And with a magic touch from guard Sherman Douglas, they're one game away from reaching the Final Four for the second time in three years. Coming up, it's the Big East against the Big Ten.